A combined footing is one that supports two columns, so it's a very important structural member. But when is a combined footing required? And how do you design the combined footing? How do you calculate the bearing stresses? How do you check the shear and the moment? And how do you design the reinforcement? This is Javier Encinas. And today we're going to discuss the required steps to design a combined footing. Let's get started. When you open as the foundation and create a calculation for a combined footing, you see this template. When the property line is close to the edge of, a, of an exterior column, if we place a regular spread footing, it would be eccentric, and that footing would tend to tilt and probably overturn. If the distance to the next interior column is short, this can be prevented by the use of a combined footing for both columns. Another situation is when the two columns are so close to each other then two spread footings would overlap, so a combined footing is a preferred solution. And a third situation is in uh, industrial plants, uh, pie racks. Those structures are typically frames at a regular spacing, and they are braced in the longitudinal direction. So these two columns of each frame are typically supported by uh, combined footings. So the combined footings are very useful structural elements. One important step in the design of combined footings is the calculation of the bearing pressure. When the load in both columns are of the same order of magnitude, the combined footing is uh, rectangular. That will result in a uniform bearing pressure under the footing. But when the load in one column is much higher than the other column, it's preferable to design a trapezoidal combined footing to keep the bearing pressures uniform. When the footing is rectangular, it's relatively simple to calculate the bearing pressures under the footing. But when it's a trapezoidal, it's more complicated the calculation. But if the footing is in partial bearing, which is if a, if a portion of the footing is not in contact with the soil, the calculation becomes very complex and time consuming. As the foundation calculates the bearing pressures for either rectangular or trapezoidal footing, and either in full bearing or partial bearing. The design is based on the assumption that the, the transverse a reinforcement will spread the load in the transverse direction. So the footing can be treated as a beam in the longitudinal direction. Then the footing becomes an upside down beam. The columns are the support and the load is the bearing pressure. As the foundation calculates the shear and moment diagrams for the combined footing, note that in a combined footing the typical moment diagram is negative, meaning that the main reinforcement should be placed at the top of the footing. The program also calculates the interaction diagrams for each column and also generates a diagram for the reinforcement in plan view and in elevation view. If we go to the at a glance tab, we can see a summary of the results. We can see here immediately if something is failing or if everything is passing. In this particular example, everything is passing. The soil bearing pressures are well under the allowable limit. The load transfer calculations all the ratios are under 1.0, so it passes. The longitudinal reinforcement, the maximum ratio here is 0.34, so the rebars are passing. Here is a calculation of the shear in one way and punching for, for the columns. The ratios are very low. And the transverse uh, reinforcement that distributes the loads in the transverse direction. This is for the exterior column, and this is for the interior column. If we go to the loads tab, we can specify a set of pre-combined loads, one set of service and one set of factor loads for the exterior and for the interior. But also we can specify a set of nominal loads, a set of load cases, dead life, roof life, snow, wind, and seismic. And the program internally combines the loads per the ACID 7, 0, 5, 10, or 16 load combinations. In the reinforcement tab, there are multiple controls to specify the rebars in the footing and the rebars in the columns. If we go to the Condens tab, we can see a detailed calculations grouped by topic, so we can check the calculation step by step. If we go to the Detail tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations with uh, exposed formulas and also with references to the ACI code for a granular check of the design. In summary, the first step is the calculation of the bearing pressure, which is very complicated for certain situations, such as partial bearing and trapezoidal uh, combined footings. 
The next step is to design the footing as a beam in the longitudinal direction, assuming that the rebars will distribute the loads in the transverse direction. So we generate the shear and the bending uh, moment diagrams, and with that information we can design the rebars. The program generates a plan view and elevation view of the rebars for a quick check of the reinforcement. The program also checks the bending and the shear in the transverse direction and designs the rebars accordingly. It's a similar situation of a spread footing in that uh, transverse direction. So a combined footing is designed as a spread footing in the transverse direction and as a beam in the longitudinal direction. As you can see, it's very simple to optimize the design of a combined footing in a deep foundation, which otherwise would take a lot of time designing by hand. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications of similar videos in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.